So my name is Lorelei McCollum. Um, I work for IBM, and today, basically, I'm going to go over my lessons that I learned um, on Jenkins. Basically, what I did in five days porting our system over to it. Over to it. So this presentation may be a little bit more basic um, as opposed to a lot of the other ones today, but hopefully, whether you know you know a lot about Jenkins or you don't know much, um, you take away something from this, and it should be a quick lightning talk. So getting started with Jenkins, this presentation I'm going to touch upon these five things um, which I found were the crucial elements to getting started when I took on this in January. Um, so build, parameterization, designing, uh, configuring your Jenkins jobs, and what plugins are there out there for you to use. So Jenkins build. This is the first thing that really threw me was the notion of a Jenkins build. When I started reading the book, um, you know, I thought this was a, for a product build, and I didn't quite think it would work for me, but the Jenkins build is really not a product build. It could be a product build. It could be deploying a build. It could be running tests. It could be anything, really. Um, and so you really got to drop that notion um, with that vocabulary that they use and think of it as kind of your run main method. So for Java, you know, it's your run main method class. That's the core of what your job's going to do for you. The second thing I found was really useful was parameterization. So we like to run a lot of stuff in parallel, so using the build with parameters option in the configure of the jobs was really useful. This allows you to reuse jobs and send you know, different parameters to the same job so that you don't have duplicate copies of that job. It allows you to easily maintain um, because reconfiguring jobs, if anyone's done it, can be tedious and painful, especially if you have, say, you know, 50 different jobs and you decide one day you want to use this new feature, new plugin that came out. If you have to go in and reconfigure, check the box and save, and then reconfigure, check the box and save, it can get um, a bit tedious. Um, the other thing is you want to think about, you know, what kind of jobs are you going to have? What kinds of parameters? Think about your pipeline. Are you going to be stream streaming jobs together? Um, what happens when you have new releases of your product, if this is for a product, or new versions? So this is what parameters can kind of do for you. They also change, um, and maintaining them can be, you know, tough. So you can use uh, source control for your parameters, and we've found that the extended choice parameter plugin allows us to use properties files for our parameters, and we can pull those from source at the runtime of the build. So this has been really useful uh, in doing that. Uh, also, the uh, parameters can help you make things run in more parallel and, you know, scale up your pipeline, run more jobs in sequence, and, you know, test more things or, or build more things, whatever you're looking to do. Designing. That was the next thing that I found was really crucial. Um, I was kind of really eager to start writing all these jobs, and then I, you know, realized you really want to step back and draw out the jobs on the whiteboard first. What is your pipeline going to look like? What are your jobs going to look like? Because the minute you start creating all these and decide that you want to change it, you have to reconfigure everything, which can be um, problematic. So you also want to you know, ensure that with this design that you can easily update or modify. Um, you want to be able to debug these jobs. You know, how are you going to do these things? Uh, what's going to change in your jobs? Uh, think about ahead in the future. You know, what's, what's your manager going to ask for, from you? you know, can you incorporate that now into your jobs as opposed to later when you have to go and redo it all? Um, the other thing is source control. Uh, Jenkins has a lot of support for different types of source control. You can store a lot of your Jenkins jobs and configurations in source. Um, you know, we don't put hard code or put anything directly in the jobs. It's all pulled from properties files, scripts, whatever it is, it's pulled at runtime from a source repository that we've kind of coined our Jenkins config repository uh, so that, you know, it controls version of these things. Uh, you really want to start small uh, and then kind of expand it. Uh, the other thing we found useful was the nested view plugin. It really helped organizing your uh, Jenkins views. I think we've seen it in some other presentations today, but uh, I just wanted to call that out because it was really useful to like make the nested folders and make custom views, and then you can put security around that so that you know only people can see certain stuff. Um, so really think about design uh, because I think that's really the the crucial piece here um, to your Jenkins jobs. So configuring your jobs. Um, 
Jenkins can run anything command line. You really don't want to hard code things. That's where the extended choice parameter plugin comes in. Um, security, who is going to run these jobs? You know, do you want everyone to be able to run them? Do you want everyone to be able to configure them? Um, it's probably not the case, especially if it's a production pipeline. So you want to make sure you have a security plan in place. And um, we've used the matrix authorization strategy plugin, which has been really helpful. Uh, so, also think about the results of your jobs. There's a lot of, you know, publishing JUnit, X, you know, the XUnit plugin. There's a lot of stuff there for how to deal with the results that comes back. Um, so that's something to think about. Um, use the workspace to your benefit. Um, that's really Jenkins' jobs. They have that there for a reason, and we found it really helpful to store state of our jobs so that, you know. They talked about this workflow plugin and how if you read Jenkins has to restart, you know, you lose everything. But if you write your jobs in a way that you can store the state of the job in the workspace, it can then pick up where it left off if something like that happens. So we found that to be really um, useful. Also think about, you know, how to maintain your jobs, how to maintain these um, the slave nodes, you know, things have to be re rebooted, things have to be, you know, OS updates have to be applied. Um, so these are some things to think about. So configuring Jenkins, Jenkins jobs, um, this is some stuff that is in the actual Jenkins configure. You may or may not have seen this or know what it is, but I wanted to just point it out. Um, you know, this build is parameterized. It's a checkbox. It's kind of hidden at the top. I've had a lot of people miss o skip over it and miss it. Um, that's how you get your build to be parameterized. And when you do that, you know, you get this option to add all sorts of different parameters based on the plugins that you've installed on your Jenkins server. Um, the extended choice parameter here, this is an example of what the parameter looks like. It allows you to use these properties files, and this is where we actually put a path to the properties file in the workspace that's really from source because we build it um, at runtime. So it, it helps you to, to really kind of organize your um, jobs better. The other plugin I really like is the Groovy Label Assignment plugin. Um, it allows you to kind of switch where the jobs go at runtime uh, to a different label or a different node. Uh, you know, so this is a plugin you can install, and then it's a checkbox at the very beginning of the job. The matrix, strategy, stra matrix authorization strategy plugin, that's also another checkbox you get in the job, and it allows you to really configure uh, users and groups specifically to your jobs. Um, so that gives you that flexibility as well. Um, this other one, the build name setter plugin, I really like. Uh, we've seen the build history list, and it shows you, you know, build number, and then it doesn't really give you much else. This plugin allows you to set that name specifically, and it allows you to use env environment variables to do so. Um, exec execute concurrent builds, that's a checkbox that's hidden as well. That gives you the ability to run these jobs in parallel. The build timeout plugin allows you to set timeouts around your job. And then, of course, the build step, which is your main method of the Jenkins job. Depending on what plugins you have installed, it gives you the, these different types of um, things you can do with that job. So I've touched upon a bunch of useful plugins. Um, you know, the slides will be out there, but these are some of the main ones that I found really useful. And you know, hopefully there's one here that you can take away with you as well. Um, the other thing is, if you're stuck or you need help, uh, Google is really your friend. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there. Chances are someone's had your question and may have a solution. I was, you know, searching Stack Overflow, posting in forums. Uh, the Jenkins book by, by O'Reilly was really useful as well. There's so many plugins out there. You know, it's, it's easy to get a uh, development environment up and running and write your own as well. Like they have a tutorial on how to do it. And, you know, I did it in like an hour. It was pretty easy to do like a Hello World plugin. So that's pretty much it. Um, is there any questions?